yep, this is based on the Toyota Yaris Cross, but I've just had a good look over it inside and out. I can't really see any relationship with the Toyota version. Apart from the platform underneath, everything else is different. Completely different body, completely different interior. Even the way it drives is different. This is the new entry level Lexus. It's called the LBX. You can get it in luxury and sports luxury trim. And of course there is the new Maritzo version, which features the GR Yaris and GR Corolla's 1.6 turbo three cylinder over 200 kilowatts. So that should be very exciting. But for now, there's just two trim lines available with the same powertrain. I really like this design actually, the black roof. I'm not a fan of this red color, but it is a nice deep, rich red metallic. You can't really see it today. It's not sunny enough, but there is sort of a gold, very fine metallic in it. But yeah, with the black highlights, black around the front grille and the headlights, the black wheels, and even these, they are plastic, but just the wheel arch, wheel arch extensions there and the side skirts, I think it all ties in very nicely. It looks pretty fat from the back as well. You've got those side haunches that stick out quite a bit. So if you think in the middle there where the doors are, and it stretches right out by the time it comes to the, uh, the hips at the back. And of course you've got the full width tail light, which is the fashion these days, and a lip spoiler on the roof. These lines on the pillar are pretty interesting. That kind of gives it a retro 1980s vibe. I think it looks good. And then under the bonnet, it doesn't have gas struts for some reason. It's just got the, the good old stick. I don't know what it is with Toyota and Lexus vehicles. They just rarely have gas struts, maybe because they think you're not gonna be lifting the bonnet. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this has got a 1.5 liter hybrid three cylinder engine. Slightly different to the Yaris Cross. This produces 100 kilowatts. The combined cycle fuel consumption is 3.8 compared with the uh, GR Sport Yaris Cross. So it's kind of the top model uh, that is front wheel drive and that's rated at 4.1. So I don't know how this is less and this is all wheel drive. There is an electric motor at the back. It pretty much forms the, uh, the rear power or it does form the rear power. There's no tail shaft running through to the rear. You've just got that rear diff, which is basic. Well, it is an electric motor. So it's not, it's a diff, I suppose, but it's just an electric motor but that means you can have independent rear, multi-link um, over the, the Yaris Cross front wheel drive, which is torsion beam. It is a unique suspension tune compared with the, uh, the Yaris Cross. I've taken it for a bit of a drive and it, it feels different. It's, it's still got that kind of pogo stick feel to it a little bit, but nowhere near as much as the Yaris Cross. It feels more tied down and more solid and more premium feel, which is what you'd expect. And then inside, nothing is carried across from the Yaris Cross. The dashboard design, it's all completely different. It's got this big square touch screen running down the dash fascia, and you've got this Alcantara style of suede all around the dash and door trims and across to the center console and seats. It's really nice inside actually. It feels warm and cozy. It's quiet as well. There's good cabin acoustics. Shut the door for you. Yeah, it just feels really quiet. It's a windy day today and you pretty much can't even hear it. Yeah, it does have Lexus's new electronic doors. So you just push that and the latch automatically opens, but you can pull it as well. It just means on the outside, you don't actually pull the handle. You just, there's a little button behind there and you just grab it and it sort of unlatches the door just by pushing the button. A little bit strange, but you get used to it. Back to this interior, I'll start it up. Completely bespoke software and everything. I'm not a huge fan of Lexus's native screen layout, but you can connect via Apple CarPlay and you have your normal apps all spread out and a bit of color as well. But if you go back to Lexus, yeah, there's just a lot of blank space on the sides in all the menus. It just seems like it could be presented a bit nicer, with a bit more sort of drama to it even. It's just black and white. Um, with a little bit of color, but yeah, not, not that much. And you can change the vehicle settings and things. This has got head up display, but it's also got the um, lazy exit and entry. So when you open the door, the seat will slide back. I really, I find those really frustrating, those systems, because I've always got something in the back, like my camera bag or something like that. So you open the door and the seat will automatically slide and try to crush whatever you've got sitting there. It is a little bit old school, but it's quite luxurious for a vehicle of this size. Um, it's just a bit interesting that, yeah, if you've got passengers in the back, I don't know about sliding the seat 
backwards into their legs unless they jump out quickly first. But anyway, it's good to have the option to turn that on and off. You've got various other settings you can play around with. I'm not a huge fan of the, the buttons on the steering wheel, so you've got to use these. When we go for a drive, I'm trying to line that up. It's going to be hard, but it's basically the head-up display there. You might be able to see it. And you've got to, you just touch these buttons once and it will pre-select where you want to be. I'll just try to do it. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so you pre-select each system, and but then you go into it by pushing it. And then on the other side, you can skip the, the track uh, for your songs and whatever. But the problem is, well not the problem, but you put your finger on it once and it pre-selects it, then you've got to push it again, and then it will disappear. So if you're listening to a song and you listen to it for, I don't know, three seconds or something, it disappears up on the head-up display. You go back in there and you've got to select the button twice, basically, to skip to the next track. Lexus has a bit of a history coming up with interesting and advanced technologies, but sometimes they don't really work in the practical world. You might remember the old touchpad down here. So it used to have this, it was kind of like a tracking pad on your laptop, which was advanced and, you know, pretty high tech. But when you're driving along, it's just too fidgety and it, it just takes too much time to, to find what you want on the touch screen or the, the screen, it wasn't touch. Um, and obviously they've gotten rid of that. But I think these buttons on the steering wheel are a bit like that. They're kind of advanced and show off the technology capability, but in the real world, I'd rather just have a skip button and just the track or whatever and then same with the uh but this is for the driver settings so all your safety settings and cruise control and then this is for your media and phone calls really good driving position i like these seats as well they're nice buckety seats but not too intrusive that it kind of makes it uncomfortable on a long journey it's they're a nice balance between holding you in and providing that comfort and the steering column it's not power adjustable but you can go in and out and up and down so I can find a, a perfect driving position pretty easily and quickly. Rear seat space is not the best, just like in the Yaris Cross. There's no climate vents, but you do have multiple or two charging ports down there. And you've got more of that Alcantara style of suede trim carried across to the rear, which is nice. But yeah, overall room, it's pretty cramped. I mean, it's, it's probably okay for two adult passengers in the back, three kids, probably okay but you wouldn't want to be that tall because my legs are almost touching the seat and keep in mind I've got that seat in my position and I'm 170 centimeters so I'm not very tall if you're a taller person or an average height person was sitting in the front that seat would be further back and yeah my legs would be be crushed even more so if I was a bit taller but headroom is not too bad my head's nowhere near the ceiling visibility you can see that big pillar so that's going to take up some room but it is only a small car so it's not so much of a problem, I guess, when you're driving along because you're not, you know, what's over there? You can just see in the mirror and the end of the vehicle is right there. So it's not that much of an issue. And then right up the back, we've got a petite little boot, but it's good enough for a couple to do their weekly shopping or just as a runaround vehicle. You've just got a little bit of extra storage and a tire repair kit underneath. All right, we'll go for a drive on a bit of a bumpy winding road. We'll test out that suspension system. As I said, so far, it does feel more controlled and, and you know, premium feeling when you're driving along compared with the Yaris Cross. I don't mean this to be a comparison with the Yaris Cross, but I know some people are going to comment that. And it is based on the Yaris Cross, so I might as well at least compare it with that in some ways. The engine does produce more power, 100 kilowatts versus 85 in the Yaris Cross hybrid. So you are getting something a little bit extra going for the Lexus, but this is priced around $20,000 more than the, the GR Sport Yaris Cross anyway. Out on the road, I'll leave this display so you can see the battery level, battery capacity, see how it moves up and down. But so far, I find that it doesn't really matter where the battery level is, it does feel the same. So it's not a quick vehicle, it's only 100 kilowatts. Push it to the floor. It picks up okay. You can feel the electric motor providing some assistance just to help that little three-cylinder uh, along while, while it's spinning up to, up to revs. This does come with a driver monitoring camera just here, annoyingly. This is a part of the latest ANCAP requirements for five stars. As with all vehicles, I don't see how that provides any safety whatsoever. Uh, in this, it's not too sensitive, like it doesn't go off all the time. Uh, mainly if you look away for a, for a, you know, a couple of seconds, but 
if you just hold a conversation, even if you move your arm, arms around a bit like I am now, it seems okay. Whereas some vehicles, it'll just keep going off as soon as you are you know, take your complete 100% focus off the road. So if I have a conversation, it'll start going off. Whereas this, as you can see, it's still not going off and I'm moving my hands around, looking around a bit, um, and it's, it's not um, intervening. So that, that is good, but I find these a little bit annoying. If you put your sunglasses on, it'll sometimes come up with a warning too, saying uh, face obstru obstructed or something like that. But yeah, easy to turn most of the stuff off. So that, that is good. In terms of the ride quality, yeah, it does feel more premium. It's quieter in here compared with the Yaris Cross, but even aside from that, it does feel like a premium vehicle, even though it is kind of Lexus's cheapest model now. The battery's gone up to full capacity already going down that hill. I think with Lexus and Toyota vehicles, you know, Toyota has been making hybrids for pretty much the longest out of all the mainstream manufacturers. So they've probably got more of an idea of how to do this, but it seems like that battery will charge automatically uh, when it needs to better than some of the other hybrid systems out there So it doesn't wait for it to get to the end and or at least wait for it to get to a point where the electric motor can no longer supply power or extra acceleration uh, And it will start charging the battery again, but even with a full or near full battery it feels the same It doesn't feel any different There might be a tiny bit of initial shove extra with a full battery, but I don't think so I can't feel it from behind the seat, but we'll do some V-Box testing later on and I'll get that battery right down to low, run some tests and then try, try it with it absolutely full, run some tests and see if there's, or see what sort of difference there is with the V-Box across zero to 100. In terms of handling, yeah, it feels good. It feels like a Lexus. It feels solid, secure on the road, even though it is just a small car. I feel like I could, um, yeah, have a nice spirited drive. It catches the bumps without sending, you know, ricochets through into the cabin. It doesn't just throw it all over the road either. Sometimes small, light cars with high riding bodies, they can sort of bounce around a bit because they're so small. Whereas this, it feels very planted and secure. It seems like Lexus has done plenty of sound insulation work with this powertrain and, and cab cabin package because compared with the Yaris Cross, that does sound pretty harsh and thrashy when you're giving it some, whereas this, I'll just slow down a bit. This, it's got a bit of a three cylinder thrum, but yeah, it's, it's kind of distant. It doesn't sound as thrashy for sure. And when you're cruising at kind of highway speeds, I mean, this is a very coarse surface, but yeah, you can't really hear the engine at all. It's just smoothly cruising along, aside from that road noise from this coarse road. Out on the highway, it's a smooth cruiser, even though it is a little zippy kind of run around with a three cylinder engine. I think the electric motor helps push it along a little bit and it even goes into EV mode, as you can see by the light down there. So I'm cruising along with my foot on the throttle a little bit, not much, and then it just disappears. But if you just coast along and just gently push the throttle, you can maintain some level of EV driving. Yeah, this is not a plug-in hybrid though, so you can see just there actually. I've got some throttle on and it's still remaining in EV mode. But yeah, it's not a plug-in hybrid, so you can't expect long distance sort of EV capability. There we go, driver monitoring camera is going off. It's averaging 5.2 liters per 100 kilometers at the moment. We've only just picked it up, so I don't know what the previous driver was driving like or the conditions that they were in. But in the full written review, we'll put the, uh, the average over the week long test. All right, let's head out now to the private road and do some performance testing and see what it goes like. And as I said, I'll show the battery level and I'll try it with a pretty much empty battery and then a full battery and see how it compares.
firstly let's try it with the battery at it's about 35 percent there aren't 10 bars in there even though it might look like it but yeah it's about 35 40 percent roughly so i'll try it with that i'll let the battery go right down i'll try a few runs as well off camera just to try and get that battery even lower but i don't think it goes lower than that uh, and then i'll do a run with the uh the v-box with it at full battery or near full battery done 10.31 10.31 yeah that's definitely as low as I can get it okay now I'll try and charge the battery up even as we're sitting here now you can see it's trying to charge the battery automatically I'm not putting my foot on the throttle like can to try and charge it a bit more actually I put it in park sorry so I've just got it in park yeah, you can't actually help it charge up. But I'll sit here for a while and let that charge all the way up. This looks like it's about 50% exactly. So I'll try the, a V-Box test with that level. I'll run the full quarter mile as well. So it was 10.13. Unfortunately, I can't get the battery any higher than what it is now. It charges by itself uh, for a little bit, for a few minutes, and then it just turns off. So it doesn't, there's no way to, you can rev the engine on the, on the spot in park, but that little graphic doesn't show that it's actually charging. So what I'll do is, in my usual regular test drives and things, I'll test it again. It'll be on a different piece of tarmac, but I'll test it again with the battery at full capacity or near full capacity. I'll go down a big long hill and then find somewhere where I can do a 0 to 100 test with the full battery, just so we can see the difference. Okay, I managed to get the battery back up to about 80 or 90%, uh, just going down a big long hill, but it's about as high as I can get it. But I am back on the public roads now, so I can't go you know, too much over 100, but we can at least get a bit of an idea of the difference between, the difference in performance when you've got a low battery and a almost full battery. Okay. So 10.3, uh, get the full result, 10.31. There you go, so it doesn't seem to matter how much battery charge you have, the performance is pretty much the same. And in fact, it did 10.1 up on the private road with the battery at a lower rate, and then just did 10.31. But they are two different roads, they were both flat, um, but you know the wind could be different where I did just then or you know there's, there's always variables but 0.2 of a second I think is is very re very reasonable compared with some other hybrids that we've tested recently.